the, my work as major could be a lot better. Uh, when I was asked, uh, would you do the same things uh, a second time? I said, no. no. So I'm here. I'm from a Lithuanian family. And for me, Latvia was a mystery. So I am afraid of my ignorance and very full of gratitude because of the invitation. The, the world is wider. So I'm very happy. Next, during my first period as major, I didn't have a map of the city close to me. People that wanted to speak to me about maps should carry the maps or the plans. I was looking at the city from the point of view of pedagogy. A city is a big machine to learn. OK, so I tried to build something new, Cultura Ciudadana, and here I reflect about the links between architecture and teaching. If an, the architect's dream, my interpretation, very arbitrary, is having the people respecting the sacred without advertising the people, this is sacred. So something where you walk, you discover limits, boundaries, surfaces, forms, and the sacred says, yeah, it's sacred, but very subtil. subtil. If you have a big library and you have to put, please, silence, the architect has not done well his work. The cathedral has to impose its authority, the behavior of the people. So you almost automatically make like that from the architecture. OK. Sorry, I ran a little bit. Well, culture is all what we need to inherit from other humans and do not get through the genes, through the biology. So architecture is typically culture. It's part of culture. From the Greek word, at least, the city needed education. You could not have a strong city without a specialized group of people that are educating other people. And the planning of the cities was contemporary to the drawing of plans for the city. So you had constitution and a plan for the city. So architects and people that work in, in law are close uh, kinds of uh, animals, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> beings. Uh, well, the uh, Clistenes had a round city with the same di distance from any citizen's house to the agora. So the space represented the equality of the right to speak, to discuss. If someone was living closer or far, he would not have the same right to speak as the others. So the imposing of some kind of principles to architecture was very clearly present there. A democratic city is very different from an aristocratic city. Well, all these are sort of limit dreams of a profession. Well, what I have written, you can read, and the other I will read. Well, the pedagogue takes, perhaps from religion, some kind of inspiration, some kind of abstract language that does not speak about immediate realities, but other, about fictional realities. And he elaborates codes that are very hard to learn, especially from the motivational point of view. When new sectors of the society get education, a lot of boys and girls 
said, but this has no sense. For many, many years, human elites were educated in information about Greece, classical Greece, 25 centuries ago. Today is maths, what defines the elite. If you do not dominate well maths, you are in, you are in a trouble. But for many, many siglos, it was Latin. And sorry to, to, to say the last thing, architecture becomes didactical material. You can explain many things looking at buildings. I have seen just the three brothers. Well, I have s explained that, sorry. Well, for me, the problem is social norms, cultural regulation, the behavior of the people. When people were saying, you are not working on maintenance of pa pavement, I said, sorry, you elected me to put pavement, control holes here. Uh, well, I can, and I presented a project for having more money for arranging the, the roads. My successor, Peñalosa, did a very good job first making maintenance of uh, pathways for pedestrians. So both we worked a lot for pedestrians, but he made it better. For me, public transport was first, and if something of the money was there, I would walk equally for pedestrians and car owners. Peñalosa said, no, the pedestrians first. And Peñalosa in Colombia is elite, is high class, it's sex, but internationally he's a progressive ur ur urbanist. Sometimes local aristocracies of countries like Colombia help u u utopian people to experiment their ideas. Basil Bentham was, when he was alive, more important in Colombia than in England. In England, he was a sort of uh, strange, uh, how do you call it? Uh, uh, well, people that are a little bit crazy. Uh, Bentham made himself to be transformed in a mummy. And in the university, there is an, an annual ceremony when his mommy is put at the table to celebrate the anniversary of the best law and moral system in the world. Colombians were killing for him. Each time liberals won the, the, the war, they made a, a mandatory Bentham's reading in the universities. And when conservatives were winning, they prohibited. So the most Colombian place in, in England is in the, near the box of the mummy of, ba of Benham. Okay. Well, what if we do not have money for architects? What if architects do a strong strike and say we do not accept no one work more during a government. There is still work in the city. The city hall is not just an office to contract architects. It's a place where a city can be changed. What can you change? Well, first, I was in love of Bogota from my childhood. Each day I discovered new things in the city. I was very was appreciating this explore, exploration. But I was sure, let, a little bit later, 16, 17 year old, that Bogota was ugly. So suddenly, 40 years old, I'm Bogota majors, and I think, I think sincerely that Bogota is ugly. So what can you do? We all know ugly people that are very attractive. They are flirtatious. 
the behavior is seductive. You look at this, a photo without dynamics, it's horrible. Like in the identity cards of almost us, all of us. But if you look how they disenvolve, there are a lot of people that are pretty. So we decided to call Bogota, Bogota Flirt Tissues. And that's the idea, change behavior. Bogota Coqueta. So it, this is the designer version. It was not the first version. The first version was a more inspired in theology. It was, I see you, I hear you. If someone makes something wrong, the other puts a card, I see you. And you take the other side of the card and say, I hear you. So sort of complicity about the correction. Educative interpretation of the city. The city is a machine, a very dense machine to learn. Where there are, the city supports very different thinking and speaking people people with very different uh, languages. Okay, so I'm going to prove my independence of the... <laughs> or if you can make it work, it's better. So, well, one story from John Elster a Norwegian professor who is the most influential academic in my 10 last years. Imagine you have 50 euros in your pocket. And imagine you have a book that you like a lot, you would like a lot to buy, that costs 100 euros. And the, the book is very easy to, to steal. And the, you know that the owner of the, of the book will not put Tuantanas Mokus in, in the hands of the justice. He will not also make too much noise socially. So I'm sure of illegal, of le legal impunity and social impunity. There is still one thing left, is the voice of my consciousness. So imagine that in face of the, of the bookshop, you have a drugstore where you can buy anti-guilt pills for 50 euros each one. What would you do? Why do you laugh? Well, if we are in microeconomy one, in first semester of economy, I would push you a little bit to say that you would buy the anti-guilt pill but we laugh because many of us would feel guilt just on the idea of, of taking an anti-guilt pill. Some of us would accept that for the moment the pill is good, but in one week, a retrospective look to my guilt feeling and my guilt neutralization, and I would need another pill. And perhaps I can get dependent of the anti-guilt pill. Perhaps Colombian cocaine is anti-guilt pill. Uh, but, care. Ah, yeah. Okay. So this is the designer version, Bogota Coqueta. And just, if you had good behavior, you made like that, and bad behavior you made like that, with that card. Um, well, the, the theory about human action is very complex, so we use a sort of approximation where you have to have motivations, you must have uh, interest, you must have sometimes reasons to act as you act, and you perhaps can have actions that come from emotions. 
So first question is, do you obey most interests, reasons, or emotions? It's clear in your life, in, 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 in average. Who obeys the most to interests? Please raise your hands. One, two, three. Who obeys the most to reasons? One, two, three, four. Who obeys the most to emotions? We are in the, between predominantly emotional people. I'm happy. And they can allow me to express more my emotions. We are between emotional people and without guns. Because sometimes you get with emotional people with guns, that's not very attractive. Then I prefer to be re reason driven. Uh, norms, oh, sorry. Norms are three kinds. And there are mechanisms. Fear of legal, san of legal sanction is one mechanism. So many, well, I, I tell a story later. Um, when I announced to the journalist that I will change in a small part of Bogota, police officers, tra traffic police officers by mimes, the first question of a journalist was, could the mime put fines? I said, no, of course, it's not any legal way of, well, except that I qualify for years the mimes as police officers. So mimes would not put fines, and they didn't. The journalist said, then it will not work. And this beautiful sentence of skepticism was ah, the, the, the source of a force for making it. I think many of architectural designs are like that. You think I cannot solve this? I will show you that I solve this. So innovation is very, it's a place for pleasure. I have directed only two theses in my life. One of them is called hedonism as moral option. So I'm a little bit hedonist. But if I speak too much about it, it can become a torture. Okay. Next, you have fear of guilt. And, well, if you should choose between the six mechanisms, what governs you? This verbal way of asking questions is not the way we do in the research. In the research, there is people that go to the houses with anonymous uh, building of the uh, group of the uh, muestra. Of the, well, this is just a, a sort of small workshop. Who obeys the most? Here you have social recognition, trust, good reputation, self-gratification, admiration for the law or moral identification with, with law. Choose, please, each one, one of the six as that that governs him the most. You, you have chosen? Who obeys the most? This has no pleasure, yes. <laughs> it's sexual suicide. <laughs> okay, so, Viagra. Um, who obeys the most the law by positive reasons? Well, I, I don't know if you understand well the task. The task is choose one of the six as that group of mechanisms that governs you the most in life, the sort of average. Who here obeys the most having these six op options the, to obey the law and to do so not looking at sanctions but looking at good reasons for obey the law? Who? One. Some 
smile. For me, that was a, 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 a Latin reaction. Fear of legal sanction. Nobody? In United States, it's 15, one. It's 15 percent. It's not the majority. And when I have done this with Latin American officials of the IDB that work in, 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 in Washington, they answer with a question. They say, here, Washington, or there, Latin America. <laughs> So people are a little bit ca chameleons. We are chameleons. Moral self-gratification. Who obeyed the most to moral self-gratification? Well, I can take a photo. It's not the majority, but it's a, a, It's good. Kant would be happy. Fear of guilt. with my help. <laughs> social norms. Who obey the most so social norms? Social recognition, acceptance, good reputation. Who is regulated mostly by fear of, of social re refusal? Okay, there is a lot of abstention. That's not good for democracy. And now the question is, to what of these mechanisms do obey the most others? Common people, not architects interested in the award, uh, but common people. Lettonian, Latin, sorry. It's, it's the same, of course. But in, 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 in Colombia we say Letonia, in Lithuanian we say Latvia. Okay, so who think that the common people obey the most to admiration of the law? You are having doubts? Who think that common people mostly fear of legal sanctions? Great, great. There's a uh, moral self-gratification. Who think that common people obey by moral rules, by principles themselves? One, no, nobody more? It's horrible. I'm <laughs> who obeys the most by fear of guilt? Who thinks that mostly, most of the people obey the most to guilt? One. Social recognition, great. And fear of social rejection, okay. So I can do, s summarize, there is strong asymmetry. You think of yourselves that you are moral subjects, trapped in a world of legal, subjects, but especially of social subjects. So other people are sensitive to shame, but very, very sensitive to social recognition. So you have half of phenomena that are in Latin America and half phenomena that are in some parts of the world, I will tell you later. So when you sum up like this, Good reasons for obeying norms, bad reasons or uh, aggressive ways of being ordered. So you are pro correct people in good manner, but you have a sort of moral arrogance. I'm moral subject, but I'm in a society where people are not moral subjects. When you think that you are the moral subject in miles around, things can get very complicated because you look sincerely on others like child that need to be applauded from external, well, so on. 
So, uh, Montevideo in Uruguay, moral subject myself, moral subjects the others. We understand, we follow the order by good reasons, others follow the order by good reasons. And Stockholm somehow in the middle between Montevideo and what we had made here, but what we had made here is not representative, statistically not worth of nothing. Well, no. But we had to study 46 cities to find the first city where the symmetry was patent, where people thought about the other people uh, as they thought of themselves. What you think about the others is more important for your behavior than what you think about yourself. It's the conclusion. Well, there is a, a, a thesis that is going to be built uh, in next years, if all things continue to, to work. So, short legal norms, moral norms, social norms. In a society, well, the thing is not where is the biggest pressure. That's interesting, but more important is if there is coherence. Public space has to be respected. It's in Colombian norms. But morally, a lot of people think that rule in an economy that it's not very dynamic and so on, so I have the right to use public space for sell contraband or something like that. And socially, it's accepted. There are a lot of people that say, let's this guy, he's not stealing, let this, this guy o o occupy public spaces. Well, it's very harsh work to protect public space in cities like Bogota. So th my first government was any day I received a, a judge order to liberate public space, 200 police officers, 2,000 police officers. Then we change it as a civilian alone. Talk, talk, talk. Please, can you help me to liberate this space? So per persuasion was more used. Then came Peñalosa, and he himself become proactive. Public officers were charged to identify invasions. And, uh, well, he advanced a lot. Then I came for my second term, and I continue with the hard line, but using more persuasion. But we were tight. On the day my second successor was appointed, uh, he, he swore that as mayor, the public was street vendors, <laughs> very happy. And I had to recognize that that's democracy. So you work a lot in that direction, and with a single votation, things can change horribly. But it was funny to feel these people enjoy it. That's hedonistic democracy. Well, today I'm classified with artists. I'm, I'm a pedagogue. But some people, Harvard people, uh, Harvard has a lot of power, uh, say, Antanas, you are an artist. So I have agreed I'm sub-artist sort of middle step, art without the pretension of, of art. But very quickly, the pretension, and with architects, they are also in that kind of frontier. Okay, so I could not speak like I spoke to you. Well, I was not elected for making lectures to citizens. So this had to be transformed in things in everyday life. The citizen's card with two sides, you're familiar. And here, the mimes. So the police was so bad, so corrupted, that the mimes were better from the first month. And nine months later, I suppressed the 
local traffic police. They got an agreement with the national police, and we fired them. They could make a sort of very complex curriculum uh, study for a year or more, and they could get incorporated in the new uh, way of working on that. Uh, fear of guilt, sorry. Uh, this is about one meter fifty. In every place where a pedestrian has been killed by a car, you have this drawing. So when you go fast and you see one of these black stars, or when you're a pedestrian and another pedestrian says, you want to be a star? Uh, it works. Well, shortcut culture, what we call shortcut culture is very frequent in Colombia. You want the result. And if the result needs to make this, you do that without any problem. Thank you, yes. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. So we have very beautiful laws. Victor Hugo, the French poet, said that Colombian constitution was for angels. And we are not angels. So we have to make us better. Jaywalking. Sometimes, well, in Bogota, nobody used seat belt. At first of the, after the first year, people used, and he made it like that. For police, seeing that you were, but here, not connected. It's, it's like made, making Spiega in Lithuania. Lithuanian language, sorry, perhaps it's an obscene gesture in local culture. Well, in, in Caracas, there was a beautiful example of mo mo moto people that put the helmet while they're going to, to Chacao, where the police enforces strongly the helmet. But once they get out of the territory of Chac Chacao, they put the cask, the helmet, on the side. In Colombian uh, stores, uh, for example, painter, you go to buy pension, the employee says you, do you need receipt? If it's with the receipt, it's 16% uh, more cost. But he, he does not that in, in, in secret, in silence. I can sell you a cheaper pension, 60% if you do not take a receipt. No, it, it's completely over. That's a clear symptom that the, the social norm accepts it. So evasion of tax is socially accepted. Was. The two times I was elected, I was elected promising more taxes. The first time as a sort of joke. I can have the luxury of announcing more taxes, and you will elect me. It was uh, fictitiousness. The second time, it was more difficult the economy situation was very bad. So I had to argue very strongly that if we want to maintain social programs of Bogota, health and education, we should have a lot more taxes. In the main deb debate with journalists, my rival, a woman, was asked three questions. I will remember only one of them. Will you raise taxes? She said, no. I said, yes. My team was completely depressed. At 3 o'clock in the morning, the, the survey firm called us, you are winning. My wife said a very beautiful sentence. It's worth to live in Colombia. Yeah. So when I go to in, in, in my office the second time, the city council said, you were elected promising more taxes, but we not. 
So what could we do? We announced voluntary tax. In Spanish, it's beautiful. Impuestos voluntarios. Imposed voluntary. It's an oxymoron. It's a Moebius strip. And 63,000 families paid. So the next step was making a manifestation. For the first time, perhaps in the history of the world, citizens were going to manifest demanding more taxes. So the councilmen said, no, no, we, we get up taxes. We use a token, a sort of money, that is market public resources, sacred resources. And many times I begin my speech asking the people, it's worse to steal the state or it's worse to steal a, a, a citizen? What do you think? Who thinks that it's worse to steal the state? Nobody? One, two. The majority thinks that it's worse to steal a citizen? It's the same. So it's equal as bad the two? Well, I don't know the Latvian uh, laws, but I'm almost sure that stealing the state is, has a sanction a lot bigger than stealing a common person. But we have to explain it. To get public resources from the economy, it's a very hard work. You have a say to have a horizontal, well, the, the same tariff for all the people. Uh, so when you put money in common for solve collective problems with collective goods, that's a sort of miracle. So you have to protect a lot that money. So in general, as much as I know, laws protect a lot more public resources than private resources. But the problem of a sort of common notion of that is not clear. Uh, well, something related to that. Who thinks that the majority of Latvian public officers are corrupt? One, some hands raised. Who thinks that the majority is honest? And there is many abstentions. Okay, in Colombia, 85% of people think that the majority of Colombian public officers are corrupted. This technically is impossible. The state would destroy it itself in one week if there were not a lot of heroes that maintain their morality and their obedience to, to law. But uh, I ask it also, who thinks that the other citizens are in a majority corrupt? And to my surprise, I had only one city in between 30 cities studied in Colombia where the majority of people think that the majority of citizens is not corrupt. Only one. In all the others, the citizens think that the other citizen is corrupt. And corruption perhaps works like alcohol or like sex. Uh, in today, this kind of research is forbidden. But 30 or 40 years ago, in the United States, people made experiments uh, saying, for example, people make love six times a week. And you get that kind of statistical information and you try to, to reach the six. Because you feel underperforming. <laughs> if you have two or three times or one, once a month. 
So people are very sensitive to information about average people. Incredibly. OK. Uh, well, these were three ways of defining cultura ciudadana. Here, it's also between public officers and citizens. The cultural and social diversity. Sorry, that's from the Mac to the Windows movement. And the objectives were more people comply with norms, more people peacefully make other people to, to obey the law. It's law enforcement by citizens, but not as paramilitary, not, not with guns, with pedagogy, peacefully. And the peaceful resolution of conflicts. I was very reluctant to the sentence with help of a shared vision of the city. I was a sort of anarchist saying, for what the hell that kind of, of vision? Next, I got so enthusiastic with the idea of shared vision that I founded a party that was called Visionary. So many times in the political context, people ask, and what, has, what is the opinion of the visionaries? Uh, well, and this is cut by the Windows Mac operation, but it's the most perhaps important for this auditorium. It's using art, using culture, using recreation uh, for making people better to communicate. Well, part, not all, but part of the violence comes from not having the instruments to communicate. Yesterday, I was visiting a place uh, where some artists are building some uh, muebles, uh, some mobiliary for, for, the, for a park where children can escalate, can make exercises, and these are painted in red color. So when you are in a family where being communist or being anti-communist was a big issue, the red color is very important. I'm not speaking about your red color, but in my family it was not uh, well received. My mother once made an exception and gave me one red shirt, and she had also one. So. She, she, she was victim from the two sides. Well, I, I will not try to justify my mother here. Uh, so now this is a little bit from the Harvard point of view. They are using Shlovsky to read what I did. Uh, and I'm very proud. Uh, but. Uh, Basil Bernstein, the English academician with whom I worked some weeks in my life, he was adv advising me that recontextualization in good universities is a very dangerous destiny for approaches. You can get the approach without the tooth. So one of the ideas of Shlovsky was to refresh, to make unfamiliar the, the, the familiar, to surprise. Create public opinion. If you have a police officer that shows you go to the corner and go to the pathway, I'm going here to the front. Why are you going to make me deviate from my... But if it's a mime, the surprising factor, the if you have a mime, a mime in front of you, you cannot abstain of making a critic judgment. So the, the well, some people say you, you are a mime, you, you have no authority, but the majority of people get captured by, they have to, they feel they have to, to, to judge. A good artwork invites judgment. 
It, it avoids neutrality. You have to speak, it's beautiful, it's great, it's horrible, it's, it's, uh, it's a shame. Okay, so this is the contribution of art to building public sphere. It's, it's strange because sometimes we say, entre gustos no hay disgustos. Uh, different aesthetical opinions have to coexist. But not, there is still a sort of temptation of saying this work, of the three works that had uh, been selected, this is a little better. And you come from a clear faith in selection and judgment. So I have not to convince judges that they are judges. But also there is a consciousness of the arbitrary, the conventional, well, and the, the, this has been work, worked by a woman called Dori Sommer, who comes from cultural studies, but he was very disappointed by the passivity of the people. It was a very critical point of view, but not engaged practically. So she detected Augusto Boal in Brazil, uh, and Eddie Rama in the cap capital of Albania, Tirana, the painter, I don't know if you know the story, it's fantastic. It's a painter is selected in the capital of Albania, and he has the horrible socialist buildings, and he paints with the colors he arbitrarily decides. Later he invites other artists and become less self-centered, and now he is prime minister of Albania. So Dori Sommer is very happy. It's a successful recontextualization. Well, the story I was beginning to tell about the red color has a big relation with that. Yesterday was completely admired because instead of uh, Eddie Rama style painting with my colors, I paint with the colors of the losers. And I recognize the importance of taking in account people from whom red color continues to have a lot of, of meaning. It's like in, Invictus with Mandela. And it's happening here. Young man who was painting, I asked him to show me what is the color of his shirt. I didn't see when he opened red. He was painting a ball in red. So reconciliation has to do with this. Respect the language of the other. If the red color is very important for the other, don't make abuse of red color. Don't allow red color to exist. In Colombia, we are in a peace process, and I'm sure that some of the decisions aesthetical ones, peripheral ones, will be influenced by this Latvian experience. Viktor Slovsky says, things get gray. So art gives back colors, not necessarily the same. Elaboration of forms stop you from jumping. When the form is strange, you, you stop, and then you have time for contemplate and judge. Okay, well, I was, well, my publicly confessable vice is to destroy guns with motor tools, to cut guns in small pieces. I have done it about four times in my life. The first time I did, military got very hungry, wrote me a letter, Mr. Mayor, you have not the right to destroy guns. Uh, so the next time I asked a, a, a permission. But now I, I I don't understand why I didn't have a better idea. It's called military of the world. 
make festivals of destruction of guns by military. It's a lot better, not a pacifist destroying guns, but a military. So beautiful the monopole you have of destruction of, of guns. Well, military normally bucket me, but on, on some December, they were reluctant to, to pr prohibit guns carrying. So I look at it in the laws, and there was an extraordinary article that said, if there is a public spectacle, the mayor of the city can prohibit carrying guns in the spectacle. So I declared Bogota from 24 December to 1st January, Bogota, a public, spe a public spe spectacle. Well, f f the military attacked me legally. I defended by the argument, but I had all another argument is as an authority, you have to protect life over, over other considerations. So I had fortunately two arguments and the, the second saved me. But the single idea that a seven million city can become a public spectacle. And in this public spectacle, you should not have the gun in your pocket was worth of, well, at least I feel very proud about that idea. And with public space, we made a, a, a sort of small, uh, small joke. You could get to market places, a supermarket chain accepted to sell public space kit. A public space kit is a plastic uh, container with grass, green grass uh, that normally is in the parks, cut it to ocup o o occupy the box. And you had one pound of cement, about two or three pounds of uh, arena, uh, of sand, and additives and a palustre, a, 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 a trowel. And we were saying to the people, do create yourself public space. Administer in front of your house, if you can buy three or four of, of this, arrange. So it was by reduction to the absurd, claiming to the people, there are collective goods that can only be built by collective effort through the state, to programs that collect money and solve the problem as we did later. Well, taxi drivers were very aggressive because some of them were killed by bandits. So we invited people to make the, the positive den denouncing. Please call the mayor and tell when a taxi driver has greeted you with good words, uh, who has taken you to the place where you go, and give, gave you full change. If a taxi driver has these strict qualities, take his name and his phone. So in three weeks, we, we had a meeting on Saturday with 120 taxi drivers. I remember them as gents. They were moral gents. I, I feel myself little on, on the side of these guys. I was asking myself if I was a taxi driver in Bogota, would I give the change uh, all? Well, if you pay an, an extra, it's voluntary. Uh, so they asked, what should we do? I said, just behave as you behave normally. They were chosen as compliant to the rules that we wanted to promote. Uh, what more can we do? I said, take a sticker. I'm a caballero de la zebra, a zebra knight. I obey these three rules. Put a zebra, a little zebra, in your mirror. And if you want to help a little more, take not one 
printed, uh, not one sticker, take 11 stickers. One for you and 10 for 10 other taxi drivers. In one year and a half, there were 25,000 Caballeros de la Cebra. But one thing I should not repeat was inviting them, them with families to the stadium of the city and making a sort of public commitment to be Caballeros de la Cebra. This was with family and so on, it was too much. It was exaggerating. Here are some of the mimes. Or, uh, at a certain moment, people were whistling. And if the car that was on the zebra didn't g get back, a, m a mime came asking the car to get back outside of the zebra. Uh, if the car didn't get back, the, 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 the mime, well, first whistles, second mime. If the mime didn't work, a policeman. And then the, the very badly reputed policeman was applauded by people because there was a logical sequence. Treat people as reasonable creatures that can hear reasons first. Search self-regulation. If you do not get self-regulation, search mutual regulation between people. If mutual regulation doesn't work, well, justice and police. I'm not saying that I do not use prison. We went on a 31 December, we prohibited artisanal uh, fireworks, and some people were selling them. So on 31 December, we were uh, cleaning the central place of Bogota. There were incidents. So the next trip was going to the jail of the city, not as prisoners, but as persons who clean the prison. Perhaps this was a better use of the prison than the normal use. Well, these are the levels. Well, we, we also did things like having uh, ambulances, the specialized cars with medical doctors, and so on. This is, you can see, very popular class aesthetics. When I look at that earth, I said, my God, I'm a, like many of middle class, I have not the proprietor decision, this is beautiful, this, make this. I'm very timid, aesthetically, and very ashamed of many of my choices or of my co 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 collaborator people. But this is important. This is a military. This is the church. I was bucked by, at least by the police and by the Catholic Church. Uh, I was distributing for replacing fireworks, a tarot kit, and one of the many things that were in, the, in this package were condoms. So, be, be, because some celebrations need some risk taking. So, I invited people to inflate condoms and to explode them. I went to, the, to speak with the bishop of the city. I'm planning to do this. Please do not oppose or please tell me if you would oppose. He said me a magistral sentence. He said, the sin is not in the condom. So I made a version for myself. I said, better do not uh, pecar, do not uh, make a sin. Better not to sin, but if you go to sin, better with condom. Uh, It was learning. That day I was in my bed, depressed. I was thinking that in all the day we will not collect three or four guns. 
So at the end of the day, and one of the small guns had its trigger packaged in gold. Try to imagine what human being can put gold around the trigger. This is the vice. And I was menaced by, by, the, by the FARC. And so I was told to wear an anti-bullet jacket, a, a, a bulletproof jacket. It's very hot. It's, you, you feel like a robot. And you are remembered all the day about the, the, the menace. So I chose to cut the hole and to make a sort of ambiguous message, saying to the guerrilla, you should well, first, I'm vulnerable. I recognize I'm very vulnerable. I will make me a little bit more vulnerable. But you, you, you have to shot with, pre, with pre, pre, precision. Uh, the, the others say, why before menacing, do, don't you study what are our proposals? It's like telling him, if you search here, Perhaps you can find a little bit of red. But you avoid to have this kind of experiences. Each of us has links with different traditions. We are carrying many together, several contradictory traditions. You cannot say socialist point of view will not prosper in, a, in some moment. Cuban ambassador was very hungry with me because I proposed to make from Cuba a museum. And I didn't understand why he was hungry. I, I truly think that if you develop the idea of city museum to the country level, a socialist economy is a beautiful experiment that was built in a very aggressive ways. Well, my Grandfather was about 10 years in Siberia. He was Menchevique in Leningrad when young. This is, this should be had soundtrack. The soundtrack is Beethoven, the hymn, the, the, the joy hymn, the El himno de la alegría. These youngsters were in, the, in tombs with just their shows visible, but a certain moment. In that moment, they sit. It was for making people aware that in Bogota, in one year, we had saved 500 youngsters. They were. 500 youngsters listening together. This is homicide reduction. Bogota was only in 1993 more violent than Colombia. At the level of, well, I will not speak about suicide. Uh, but in Latvia, in Lithuania, there are a lot more suicides than homicides. Japan is the record. In Japan, for one homicide, you have 24 suicides. You have to protect the Japanese people from themselves. Something like that happens here. There are a lot more suicides than homicides. In Colombia, for one suicide, there are six homicides. So Colombians have to protect one each other. Um, that's, for me, a strong link between where we put responsibility. Latin Americans, we put responsibility on the other. So we commit easier a homicide than a suicide. Uh, East Europe, Scandinavia, Japan, in these societies, people uh, well, co co 
co co co commit suicide. Well, and I had so much enthusiasm with, her, with what he had made that in my second term, I strongly used the idea of build on what the others have built. Uh, do you know what is the most terrible nightmare for a machista, macho man? Almost as grave as this is having to bring out another man's children. So you have impotence and your wife goes with another guy and he got, she got embarrassed. Well, th th that's a bad joke, but um, I try to not, do not be machista. So in my second govern, government, there was strong tensions between Mokusists and Peñalusists. There is a beautiful Denmark-made film called Bogota Change, where the work of the two is shown as very complementary as, uh, as it was. And um, so we arrange it. Now it's popular in Colombian public, the, 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 the scores to say, construir sobre lo construido, to build on the, on, 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 on the build. Well, this would be a love story with Peñalosa. Uh, I never thought that in the discussion about pedestrian paths, a person not familiar with philosophical tradition would use Kant's criteria. If you privilege cars, Cars are not a universal solution. Urbans flowing with many cars cannot be for all the people. Cars, expensive models of transport, are giving privileges with the knowing that that privilege will not be expandable to all people. Every people on the earth with a car is a complete nightmare. And this was put in the, in the discussion by urbanism. So I expect to have given some flavor of what urbanists learning from philosophers and philosophers learning from urbanists. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much for this insp inspiring talk and speech. So, uh, if you are ready, I think we will have plenty of questions. Maybe I will start this plenty of questions. I join the moderator with the my deep gratitude to this, uh, to this lecture. Um, uh, I was struck by um, the mm, duality of homicide and suicide. So my question is, how do you think this, uh, this is not, uh, does it can uh, relate it to the uh, aggressiveness, the level of aggressiveness? So, and uh, hom homicide and suicide are the same, uh, uh, the two, two sides of uh, the same coin. So, because of your fear of uh, this and that and the third, uh, one choose to use homicide, another to kill himself. 
I have the micro. We have 32 enter. It's like if we had planned uh, this question. Uh, it's a very strange thing. Well, I'm not here promoting suicide first for a thing. But I think that it's a little bit more decent than homicide. It's a bad uh, taste, bad uh, aesthetics to kill other people. Well, suicide also has arguments against it. But no. <laughs> the red <laughs> overflows. Uh, Sorry. In Colombia, for many families, to have someone died from suicide is a lot more uh, shame-causing situation than having someone killed by homicide. My better friend was killed by homicide, and the family would not try to, hi to hide it. If someone is killed by suicide in Colombia, well, only poets have the right to, 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 to kill themselves. Well, there's a famous that went to, the, to a doctor and asked the doctor to, to show exactly the place where the, the earth is for him. So the strange question is that there are not societies who have... No, if you get... You, you have to look, to, it's, it's hidden. Ah, it's not 32 because it's another version. So, cultural map of the, of, of the world. Well, there are no almost countries. Exactly, this is. You have Latvia here. The average of homicides in the world is eight per 100 inhabitants. I will show more in detail this in, in the next, but here we have Latin America. Many homicides, few suicides. The most bigger suicides, the, the bigger figures in suicide are South Korea and Lithuania. Uh, Latvia is here, not as suicidal as as Lithuania, but almost. Um, so, Guatemala, Venezuela, Tobago, Salvador, Honduras, Jamaica. But you have Peru. You, you have some ex exceptions, China. If we look, can we change the, to the next? <laughs> It's Stalin, no? <laughs> no, it, you have to get in the general view, it's hidden. So it will not... Have, well... <laughs> I promised the Lithuanians that if I commit suicide, I will get to Lithuania to commit it. <laughs> I do not feel responsible with my Latin American identity killing myself in South America. South America is it's, uh, poor, it's very strong differences, but a lot of people declare themselves happy. And uh, well, the relationship with the body, I feel it's a little better in Latin, Latin American people. Well, that, that, that's a prejudice. It's, uh, well, I don't want to Okay, that's good. Here we have traditional values. Here we have rational, secular values. With the, this is made with word value survey. So secularization goes from here to here. And my, the main explanation for suicides, for me, is this movement. You have also a movement from survival values to self-expression values. My mayorship is very akin to
to this movement. But I also try to move in that direction. My team is like that. Um, this more than 20 per 100 inhabitants is victim of homicides, and this is 20 per 100 handed inhabitants co co commit suicide. These are also exception. Well, Estonia is, doesn't reach 20, but it's close. But China is a very strong exception. It's secularis secularization with low level of suicide. But Japan is very high, and this, the, the, the Scandinavian were classically the most suicidal, and now they have been uh, overrun by such different countries like, well, Confucian, ex-communist. Ne next, please. Next. No. So, I don't know if I answered the, the question. Uh, Thank you very much. It is a uh, brilliant uh, answer, but my question also is a bit more general and maybe sim simpler to, to say that it's why do people kill and how to stop people to kill themselves or others? Yes. Well, we have to recuperate or to build a taboo. People, for example, think that they have the right to kill the other in self-defense. If someone is going to kill myself, I think that, well, nor I, but many people think it's legitimate to kill the other. For many months in the first term, in the meetings, I was asking people, would you kill? Well, here we, we have opened the door, so it's not so easy, but who here would kill? And in which situation he would kill? And it's incredible. Almost all the people say, I should kill if some feminine member of my family was being abused sexually by a person that if you search a little bit, is ethnically different from you. So if the violator is of the same ethnical group, you do not like that he makes the violation, but to some extent you would perceive. So, well, in the United States, many people buy guns looking to this situation. Obviously, medical epidemiological studies have shown that this situation is, of course, but of course, scarce. It's, it's not a usual fact, but it's a fantasy. Um, in France, you have a song uh, by Georges Brassens that is calling, hey guy, you robbed me, you didn't take the second guitar, thank you, you didn't take the bad portrait of myself, you, are a good, you would be a good critic of art. And finally, do not feel obliged to come back, but I have to thank you because you helped me to make this song. So if I call this the French approach, it's a lot better morally than American. Uh, well, perhaps we have many thousands of years where war was associated to violation. And perhaps we can explain our, ourselves this kind of, of ethnical stamp on, on, on violation. Killings are more seen like sometimes interethnic, sometimes intraethnic. The beautiful thing is that suicide is by definition intraethnic. 
que viva el suicidio porque no discrimina the suicide cannot aliment himself from the ethnic distance so thank you for the question because I feel I advance it we are working a lot about this imagination how do Latvians imagine Russians how do Russians imagine uh, Latvians what you what is the image of the other influences more your behavior than what's your image of yourself perhaps of your own group so modern tolerance to cultural diversity and moral defense has a lot to say a lot to do in these things my best collaborator is an afro american an afro colombian and in many conferences he begins saying my professor antanas said that if you have not formed a better academician in your field, you are a failed case of academician. So I have said Henry Murain Knudsen, that's introduced a complication, is working together. Now is better than myself. Is, uh, we are going to make the survey in, in Vilnius, and it's his actions, his work with Lund University that has made it possible. Um, well, the same things can be found in feminism. Well, humanity changes some part of the of the machine, but we have a lot of work to complete it. There is a lot of discrimination. We were with the Colombian Petroleum Company higher chief, the president of that company. And this president made a machisto, a, a, a machista joke. Henry stopped him. We do not accept chistes machistas. There were contracts to be made with that company, etc. Henry clearly risked. We made as, uh, an ad to, te to, to television when a, a, a macho man is with f pure men, with uh, ma ma masculine group. And he says, I got this girl she wanted to pay part of the bill. I had my card. I paid. She has small things. I will I offer her an operation. He is presenting himself as a good match. But he exaggerates so much that the other machos be, be began to look one to the other, like saying, this is crazy. This is uh, so it's the shame of the macho in face of the machos. We do not show, um, like other television ads, a beaten woman. Machismo, perhaps, has also the same structure that we saw in the homicide suicide. Machismo is a thing between machos. W women are just a sort of uh, Coto de casa, a place where to go hunting. And when you commit suicide, you kill the, the woman that you have in yourself. You cannot, a gender homicide is a lot rarer than in, in Bogota. Men were 14 times more, had 14 times more the probability 
of killing of being killed men than women the woman's life is respected so we should work to from this well, the gender barrier protects from homicide the ethnic barrier does not on the contrary there is more in, 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 in the ethnic homicide. Uh, I read a book about women who commit homicides in Mexico, and there are a good new and a bad new. The good new is there is not reincidence. A woman that has killed someone does not kill another guy. But the bad new is women kill almost in every case the men, the man that she, she has loved the, the more. So, well, I, I, th I thank a lot the question because it obliges me to go further. It's a uh, Thank you very much once again.